Podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Maker. What's going on? Not, not even on my dad walk on. Well, man, we down here in Houston, Texas, man. We done ran up on a jewel, man. Kendrick James is in the building. No Say, games in the building. Pleasure to be here, man. Thank y'all for even having me, man. I feel honored. Man, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, we uh, definitely uh, love the culture down here. H Town, man, where it all go down, man. Yes, you know, sir. Yes, you, sir. Uh, I don't know if you remember me, but I was that they call over there, do some park, <laughs> rolling through on them men <laughs> with the speakers in the back, the Sherwood Vegas. We couldn't. Uh, I was in the front Look, seat. with the six by nines. Yeah, the six by nines <laughs> with the Sherwood Vegas. I'm talking about the whole house speak. I done took my Amy's speaker out the house. Yeah, yeah. And it's just sitting in the back seat. You can't ride back there in that back seat. And it wouldn't fit in the trunk. If yeah. you want, that's how sharp I was. I was. I don't know. I how was y'all fourteen did it. years old. <laughs> I come through Dusen Park. Yeah, yeah, banging that. My posse going Broadway. Say, listen, and man. that beat. Hey, me and Kiss Sensation. That home away from home in the black men limo with the cellular phone. Oh, say, now, y'all don't know about y'all y'all come on, come on, man. Hey, oh, boss talk, man. Oh, See, y'all gotta understand, man. man. That's this my here, type of I time, said baby. What I said, nigga, I'll be down here. So you can't bar me, nigga. This is my city, too. Nigga. It's going down. You man. can't bump like yeah. that no more. Nah, I don't really do that no more. That was a, a young nigga that was crazy as hell. Let's go, man. Let's get this interview going. Yo, let's get so, it. So, you know, I like to know you as a person. You know, he he deals with you as an artist. I deal with you as a person. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so ma'am. So tell me about you, the person, the things you've been through. How you overcame, where who you, you are, where you're from, well, well, everything. First off, man, uh, I'm a product of Houston, Texas, born and raised. Uh, I come from Acres Home. Uh, that's on the north side of yeah. H-Town. For those of y'all that don't know, Acres Home is actually the second largest historically black community in America. In that's America, hard. not even in Houston. Yeah, in America. in America. Yeah, like like just to kind of give y'all a background. What's like the we actually had um, our own bus line. We actually had our own taxi cab service. We actually had our own FM radio station. You know, things of this nature. Like, in, in the FM radio station and the taxi service was actually uh, something that's you know like like the taxi cab service was around to like the nineties. The radio station was around to like maybe like the early two thousands and things mm-hmm. of that nature, but like um like Acres Home is a, a a very um it's rich with history. You know, it was one of the places to where black people could come to and thrive, and it's actually called mm-hmm. Acres Homes, uh, short for Acreage Homes, because every house had an acre of land with it. And so, you know, like... Uh, is it uh, still thriving today? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely, man. And uh, What's the secret? Because, you know, a lot of places that is predominantly black don't stay thriving. You want to know what it is? We have a sense of pride in our community to where, uh, which don't get me wrong, there is a little bit of gentrica- gentrification mm-hmm. sprinkling in. But for the most part, we have such a pride in our community to where we kind of understand the value of where we're from mm-hmm. and uh hold on to that culture and so you know um it's one of those places to where we understand not to sell granny house when she passed because mm. well, we, we got pride in our hood you know that's one thing i could say man like if you meet somebody from acres homes they definitely gonna be extremely proud of being mm-hmm. from acres homes and um you know, it's 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 a it's a beautiful place, man. Like so were you raised with mom and dad at home? No, 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 not at all, man. Raised with mom, man. You know, dad was um, you know, uh absent. You know, typical ghetto story. You know what I'm Rolling saying? Rolling stone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or exactly. was he in prison? Which one? No, no, no. Just absent. Just absent. Just absent. Did you know him? Spirit. I knew who he was, but I didn't know him. You never met him? No, I well I met him when I was fourteen. And then I didn't see him again until I was twenty two. But I mean, honestly, like I kind of thank him for that because in him not being there, that showed me what I needed to be. But did you have an example of the person that you needed to be around you? Because, you know, sometimes you have that person who step in to play that father figure role. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was I was surrounded by uh, some role models and things of that nature because I mean like you know I grew up in a church background like mm-hmm. even though I got into the streets um, and my mom was like the secretary of the church you know so I was like I grew up being one of them six days a week in church kids you mm-hmm. know the way I didn't mm-hmm. did everything except for preach a sermon in church and things of that nature so it's like I had the brothers in the church being that role model but then me being in the streets 
And you I still end also, up in the streets. Yeah, I was embraced. I so conceived what it was, man. My mom like worked nights. Single mom, you know what I'm saying? So she working nights, sleeping, you know what I'm saying, during the day. So, you know, doing the best what she could, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, you know, she raised me right. I just made my choices and decisions. But um, but also too, I can say that I had the blessing of like coming up in the game to where there was still some types of standards and morals that just absolutely don't exist nowadays. Yeah. And so it was one of those, you know, like I come up in that area where like the OGs didn't let the youngins do indulge too mm -hmm. much, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was exposed to certain things, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, whenever they saw that, you know, certain ones had potential, you know, they mm -hmm. would keep you away from it. Whereas nowadays, you know, the OGs is in the clubs with the youngins. You know, so they can't give them no guidance. So, and you know. it's so crazy because, you know, being a woman and a mother, and you know how, you know, I always hear my, my husband always say, you know, women, we are emotional creatures and so forth. So I always think about the reason why I always ask this question, because I have a son, I have, you know, kids. And, you know, as much as, you know, we try to work hard to supply a good life for children, you're not there all the time. Yeah. And I've heard so many people sit in that seat where you are and saying, because my mom had to work four jobs, three jobs, whatever, to supply. That's why I ended up out on the streets, you know, living the street life. But of course, when she came home, I was at home, but yeah. she didn't know what I was doing until I got in trouble. Yeah. But we do the best that we can for, of you course. know, but and, I'm and, like, and they still go out here and do the things that you don't want them to do. Well, this is the thing. And let me just say this, uh, you know, just as a parent and also to, to any mother that's watching, do your job and give them the game because even though I strayed from it, it was still instilled in me. Mm -hmm. And so even though I was out on the streets wild and I still had certain limitations that some of my partners didn't. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like I come I like from a, I come from a, a crew of wildcats. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And like I'm the only person out of my everyday crew that didn't catch a murder case. Mm. Yeah, that's because you, you know. didn't get caught. I was just about to. I was, I was just yeah, about to. You didn't to prove it. You thought you were going to throw the curve ball to me. Let me, let let me caught get up the nigga away from this I table. I caught it and I throw it back out. I caught it and I throw it back out. Feel. Yeah, nigga, don't try to throw that in here, nigga. Bam, caught it. Oh, yeah, no, it's just a blessing, no, you, you know, know. Yeah. in the hood, you know, where it's always good and understood. You know, I ain't going to lie to you. I, I definitely know that we, our people go through so much. We yeah. normalize things that other people would be terrified of. Yeah, super so, facts. You I know, mean, we, we come from a situation to where other people, not, let, 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 matter of fact, let, let me skip that. We're always in survival mode. Correct. We're always in defense mode, you know, and sometimes that's a bad thing, but that's the reason why no matter what they put up against us, we are still able to thrive. I think the most important thing is that we, we, we keep doing what we're doing right here, right now. Yeah. Having sensible conversations so that we can permeate the youngsters who basically don't have nowhere to look because niggas out here wilding. Yeah, so Old facts. niggas, young niggas, like we was talking yeah, about yeah, before like the we cameras. About earlier, Old right. niggas and young niggas is wilding and we need some sensible niggas like you and myself yeah, to come business. through and have a grown man yeah. conversation with a grown lady and be able to influence the people to say, <laughs> Man, yeah. that's all right. Super it's all right fast. to be yeah. all right. You know what I'm know, saying? Because the thing about it is, man, is that, um, you know, like even in my music, man, like I give you the game, you know, because uh, I, I come from it. But at the same time, like I give you the consequences of it. That's hard. Because that's the whole thing about it. You know, like everybody watch Scarface and want to be a dope man, but they forget how it ended. Mm -hmm. Everybody watch New Jack City and want to be Nino, but they forget how the movie yeah, ended. Yeah, yeah, They skip past all of that. Everybody love paid in full, but they forget how it ended. Yeah, American Gangster. And that's gangsta. the whole thing, you know. American like, like, Gangster. No, no, yeah. nigga, don't got to get yeah. away from American Gangster, yeah, nigga. Yeah, that too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm going to tell you the Denzel truth. did his thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He come home, Frank Lucas. Uh, he got out, you know. Yeah. He said, you know, if we want, nigga, I can start it back up right now, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just tell you, man, like one of the realest things one of my OG homies told me, the penitentiary come with all of this. It do. That's real. The you penitentiary see, that's the thing is people all glorify all of the so-called good things, but all of yeah. the negative things, they don't really shed light on all the negative things. And show, or you have the youngsters say, that's not gonna be me. Just because you ended up in that situation, yeah. that ain't gonna be me, I'm gonna be different. Yeah. Oh, I remember that, man. I remember it was one time, man, where I had the whole block mad at me, because uh, I never forget, I was 15, and I stood out there arguing with the big homies, and I was telling them that only stupid people went to jail. Mm. 
Mm, see? And I'm talking about they was like, like wanted to fight, fight. And I'm mm-hmm. like, nah, nigga, I'm smart. Nigga, only stupid niggas go mm-hmm. to jail. You didn't know no better, did you? I didn't know no better. I learned, though. Over the years, it taught you. A few times. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to leave it at that. But, man. you know, God bless. I'm here, man. Still standing, you know, trying to, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's really why I move how I move. And, you know, uh, you know, because I bumped my head a couple of times. I was active out here. You know, I'm no stranger to the streets. Cats know who I am. And, um, you know, I try to use that uh, for positive, you know what I'm saying? You know, to try to give some game, you know, and some insight that I wasn't giving. And this the is the best way to give insight yeah. to me, because if I know anybody, I know the fact that people don't like to be told what to do, especially face to face. Yeah. They'll take the advice over the screens because nobody actually know that they're taking your advice. Because yeah. not everybody's going to come on and say, man, I changed my life because of him. Yeah. People don't like to do that. But as long as you change somebody's life, that's the main purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you what it is, though. The main thing about it is is that when you're hearing it from somebody that you feel like don't understand, then Mm -hmm. you're not going to receive that. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you you from the hood and some white man, you know, comes in a suit and tie, hey, just say no, you know, go to school, eat your vitamins. You know, you're not going to listen to that because you feel like this ain't nobody that understands your struggle and what you're going through. But if it's that cat that you see that's really from the trenches, you know, that cat with 10,000 tit drops on his face that you know been about the business and him telling you something is going to reach you a little bit better than maybe mom and dad because you feel like this is somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. This is somebody who's speaking my language and they understand where I'm at. And so that message is going to resonate a little bit more. I got a so, question you know. before we get into the music. Yes, ma'am. About, um, tell me about a time in your life that you can talk about. Yeah. Um, Streetwise, probably, where you, as you got older now, you can reflect back and realize that it's God who intervened in your life, why it didn't go left when it could have. There was a certain situation, and I'm not going to just go too much into detail, Mm -hmm. but I'll just say this. I was in the middle of doing something that I had no business doing, Mm -hmm. and uh, a cat had a pistol, like, right in the middle of my forehead. And the gun jam. Mm. And it's crazy because like he pulling the trigger, and like and he like throwing it, like actually like hitting me in the middle of my forehead with it and the gun and jam. You mm. know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because in that moment, like we both stopped and just looked at each other. And then I just took off running. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that was that was definitely like one of the moments to where I know that that was like nothing but God. And you know, whatever that was going on at that time definitely was ceased at that moment. But you know. Like I can, I can honestly say, man, that uh, cause you know, want to come before destruction, man. Exactly. Want to come before destruction, you know, you whether it's that voice or you know that granny telling you, or sometimes it's your girl say, baby, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Baby, don't go that place. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna always get that warning before that bad happening. You know, it, uh, now I pay attention to that. You know, what I'm I saying? just wanted like, to I'm, acknowledge him because yeah. a lot of times, you know, we go through things and people don't really always acknowledge that it's God. Oh yeah. A lot of times it's when you get older and you look back on your life yeah, and realize. Facts. Man, if, if you from the hood, you got to know God. You got to know that it couldn't have been nothing but God to get you out of certain situations because mm-hmm. there's no other explanation but that. You know what I'm Man, saying? Man, you, know, uh, you know, it's a lot of people that don't understand there's a scripture, you know, that say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and yeah. all that other will be yeah. added unto you. Yeah. You know, you just got to seek righteousness, man. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of times we, we, we out here, we family men, we got kids, they looking up to us. We got to do right by them. Yeah. I got to keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? We can rap, fitness. we can hang out, we can talk and all that, but we got to we gotta do what's right for the next yeah. generation. You See, know we got to learn that, though. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it But how long is it going to take? Time. Well, I'm speaking like just being a young bull, because I know you yourself, you can admit that there was a point of time in your life to where you didn't have this same mindset. You yeah, but we got to inject and we got to move like yeah. nobody business. It's high time. And that's you know the what reason I'm saying? why people like us is necessary because at the end of the day, it's up to the OGs. You know, like we was having that conversation earlier, like part of the disconnect with the OGs and the young cats is that the OGs too busy still out here trying to be young. They on their Peter Pan. You know what I'm saying? You know, you dressing like the young cats. You mm-hmm. still doing the same drugs and the same clubs. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, like I grew up in that era to where you know, you try to step into a grown folk circle, you know, and mind you, I'm in my late teens, early 20s, and I'm trying to be in some certain circle. And this, you know, it's some old school cats like, say, youngster, go play. Yeah. This yeah. ain't your place. You know yeah. what I'm saying? 
you know, to where it was just understood, like the the OGs, the real OGs, carried themselves like something to not only respect but something to follow. Man, let's you know talk about it, man. Let's talk about this music, man. Let's How did you first it. start, you know, even rapping? When you did you pick up a pen and pad? Was you punching in early on, nigga? What was going man, down, man? Look, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. Music is something that's just always been in me, man. Like if you go back and um you know, I be posting on my throwback Thursdays if you follow me, man. Like, I didn't even want toys, man. I wanted music. Really? Yeah. Uh, but you said Acres Home? Acres Home. Wait a minute. That's, that you sounding like, I be hearing Slim Thug talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the homie, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, y'all y'all had to be in the same area. Yeah, man. Like, no bull, man. Like, me and Slim uh, went to the same schools. You know, so like Lil Mario, j Dog. Um, like, I, I was there for that. The Young Hogs movement. Yeah, like all of them little homies. You know what so, I'm saying? So, okay, when you think about it, I mean, because I, I, I be playing games, you know, I, I, I put people up against people in versus and yeah. stuff, you know, I match niggas up. How many projects you got? Man, I'm 17 in, baby. If you 17 in, that was a cat, that's another cat around here. And ain't this ain't got to be lyrically. This is like who jamming the hardest. No. Uh, uh, if you was in a versus and, and you got to tell me how you would win. Yeah. And you was against uh, Killer Kyleone. Killers are hard, man. How, how would you? Uh, how, would you win or would you not win? Let me tell because you. I told Lil Kiki, I put Kiki against uh, who did I put Kiki against? Is it Slim or Flip? I put Kiki against Slim Thug. Okay. I put Flip against ESG yes. when he came to yeah. see me. Then I put uh, uh, DJ Chose up yeah. against uh, uh, no, it wasn't B no, King. No. It was Sauce Walker. And then Walker. he yeah. asked for B King. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. This, that this make is, more sense. This is that friendly. Sense. This is just friendly yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah, friendly conversation. Uh, but I'm it's a, really a friendly competition because you niggas done did so much work down here. I gotta say it, man. Who would win in a versus between you and Killer Kalyon? Let me say this with the utmost respect for Killer as an artist because he's definitely a top tier lyricist yeah. that is not to be taken lightly. Like, I'm going to give him his flowers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to win and I'm going to tell you why. Because I can do that without cussing. That's that's hands down. Like, so ain't, the, the, ain't the reason nothing, why ain't you, nothing out the city messing with me because I can be he super got a clean air. He got a clean air. He got a clean aspect about yeah. it. He can clean it up straight up. Like, hey, listen, he would do his thing, but I stopped cussing in my music in 2015, and I promise you that I have delivered consistent albums that's just as jamming quality street music that to where you don't even know you listening to something without no cussing. And why I did know you for stop? a fact. So um, on my 13th album, uh, and I mean this volume two, so 13 in numerology symbolizes change and the start of a new cycle. So uh, like I told you, you know, my mama was straight church house, man, and she had never listened to my music before. And um, it was that. And then uh, I was in the hood one time, man, and I saw one of my nephews like singing the lyrics to my song. You know what I'm saying? He was cussing and it kind of bothered me some. And so I kind of just decided that like for that 13th project, I was going to make one that my tea lady could listen to. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it was funny, too, because when I gave a tour for her to hear, like, the next time I saw her, like, she just walked up to me and, like, popped me on my arm. I'm like, what you doing? She's like, I, I can't figure it out yet, but I know you cussed on that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, uh, but it was crazy, though, because, like, the reception that I got from that, like, it just opened up uh, completely new doors for me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, like, created new opportunities for me that I just had never had. And mm -hmm. so it was like, you know what? Like, Motivation like, to keep doing it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And that was just the EP. And then it started as an album. And it's like, you know, like, man, if you look me, I mean, like, y'all done heard me. You know what I'm saying? You know, collaborate, man, with K Reno. Yeah, but no, nah, let me go back. Don't you know. jump out there. Okay, like my bad. That. Come on, come on. Let's, let's, nah, let's, I want to talk let's, about this Kelly Calion uh, defeat. Y'all standing up there. He going song for song. The nigga lyrical is hell. I no, done, listen, man. I done heard that a nigga monster, jump bro. out there. And I, Yo, killers are monster. Listen, listen. We not even finna play games. We not even finna play games. Like, uh, I mean, I'm, I met Killer at um at a Corey Moe's house, man. Shout out to my boy Corey. Shout Moe, out man. to Corey Moe. That's I talked to I first him. met him, man. You know what I'm saying? Like me, me and Killer was doing some shows. That, that was back when I was going by KID at the time. Okay. Man. And uh, the last show we did together, man, we did one at the Superdome. That was when they gave uh, Manny Fresh the keys to the city. Man, that was like right before Katrina. Uh, that was during my second deal. That's you know all. What I'm saying. So you know, like um. You know, I haven't communicated with him or just been in touch with him since then, but like, we was familiar with each other. Respect. You know what I'm saying? There was a mutual respect. And like I said, you know, like, like, nigga, killer, killer's a monster. Like, like, we not finna play those types of games. Like, but lyrically, you know, he's a clean top version. Tier. gonna come home. See, like, man, I, I feel like ain't nothing messing with me. 
If we just gonna just keep it funky, you know what I'm saying? But, but as an MC, ain't you supposed to feel? No, that you way? you better not come on here buying ain't down you nothing. Supposed to you better get in there. Time. You feel? You been you seventeen yeah. projects, seventeen yeah. albums so in, I'm, I'm and you gonna to tuck say your this. tail? Because guess what? If you if if Killer was sitting right here, he gonna say the same thing. Of course, I would hope he would. Well, every I, I, I have not had nobody sit in front of Boss Talk 101 when I put these verses up and be like, "No, nah, he'll get me." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just I'm yeah. just putting it out there, and it's really just so. Let me let me pump the brakes for a second. It's just really to show homage to the people who mean yeah, something yeah, in the yeah, city. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love y'all, man. And yeah, Killer yeah, Calion, yeah, I've been yeah. a fan. I never got to meet him. Yeah, One day I'll get to interview him, you yeah. know. Say, but man, at man, the end the man of the is an undisputed legend out the city, man. You can't take nothing from now, him. Man. I could have said J-Dog, then it would have just... I mean, but that's a little bro, though. He'll, he'll <laughs> tell you I'm a monster. He'll tell you I'm a monster. Boy, there's some crazy stuff up here. Y'all got yeah. some talent up here, yeah, bro. we got, like, super talented. Like, man, like, if you... See, a lot of people don't know, man, but if you go back, like, you can find, like, uh, like matter of fact, 50 Twin just did an uh, interview on Donnie Houston. 50 Twin, Houston. boy, yeah. that's hard. Like, he, he just did an interview on Donnie Houston where he's talking about how I showed him and his brother how to rap. You know what I'm saying? That's hard, Like, I, I grew up with these cats. The thing was, was that I was in the streets and I was just getting in trouble and... They took it a little bit more serious than I did. Man. But like I was there. Like like the store that made Swisher House blow up it yeah. was a store on Gulf Bank called Selective Sounds. We finna give a history lesson. Selective Sounds was right there on the corner of Gulf Bank and Antoine. My Uncle Brent had a barbershop right there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I used to hustle on that block. Okay. I was out there every day, like getting it in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Selective Sounds was so important that when the feds raided Watts. They also raided Selective Sounds. Damn. Eugene, there was a cat named Eugene Gibson, man. Big Gene, man. I'm going to give you your flowers, bro, because don't a lot of people leave you out they of the don't. equation. Yeah. But, like, I was there. So, like, I saw that transition. I saw that beginning. You know it's what I'm saying? You know, because, like, Swisher House started off as a homestead thing. The very first person who wasn't from the stead to be on the Swisher House tape was Lil Mario. Like, yeah, Lil, Lil Mario, Mario. Lil Mario took me to Swisher House before I had to go turn myself well, in. Wait a minute. You know wait a minute. You, you, you bringing back memories now because, yeah. man, I remember, man, them nigga were beefing, nigga. That nigga Slim Thug had a whole, uh, it was a whole L.A. Uh, sounding Album that talked about Lil Mario. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, he talked beef. about all them niggas. Yeah. J Dog. He got yeah. every nigga that, yeah. and, and yeah. he was slaying them niggas. I didn't yeah. really. I heard their part too. Yeah. But for some reason, Hills came like it was like. Yeah. My, what, my, no, my name is thrown in there. I'm, you was without, on there too. Let me know. I wasn't on there. <laughs> but I'm just gonna say this. Uh, the homie OG Capo. You know, in like yeah. one of the dish responses. You know what I'm saying? He he mentioned my name in there. Wow. I was, let me just say this, and I'm not gonna go in too, too much into it because them the homies, and I didn't have a dog in that fight. Yeah. Because it was really disappointing for me to see the homies into it at that time. Yeah. But at the same time, um, I was there. I was outside. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. I, 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 I'm a part of that story, and was it uh, it was it really that it was it, it it was was it on wax or was it it could have got ugly? Oh no, it was real. So it could have got ugly. Oh no, it got ugly. It Damn. was real. Like I ain't gonna lie to you. Like you know, we're not gonna incriminate nobody, but it got it got real. It got ugly. It got ugly. Damn. You know, the, the hood know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? But you know, thank God that it's not there. You know, people grow and and uh, you know get past things. And I mean, you know, it was a misunderstanding. You know, uh, young bulls. That was at the peak of their game. You know, it happens. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you're going to get that uh, Ali and Frazier yeah, yeah. type activity. You know, everybody want to be at the top. You know what I'm saying? The you yin know, and the yang. Yeah, you know, the Jay-Zs, the Nas's. You know, it just so happened that for us, you know, that was what that, that was, was, it. was. You know what I'm saying? Um, with, during that time, like, when you, that's the young boy era for you. How old would you have been? Because that was around about... Uh, we was in the North Dallas. Uh, I was over yeah, in North that, that Dallas. Yeah, that was like late eighties. I mean, let me say no, late 90s. no, late nineties. Yeah, late nineties. Late nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that, by that, like nine seven nine eight yeah. was when it just started taking off. You know. Yeah, and I was mad at y'all too when everything switched over because you niggas stopped. Y'all had the game on lock. Houston was. I'm from Texas. Yeah, I felt like we had some. You know, I don't. I'm the, the. You know, I'm like the president or the governor. I'm not looking at it from. I'm from here. No, no, nigga, yeah. it's Texas. Yeah. Okay, I wear a Texas medallion. You know, yeah. it ain't that big, nigga, because I don't want you niggas trying that. And it's diamonds almost. Oh yeah, nigga. TX out there. But, <laughs> but let me just say, I love the. Uh, I, I I love the way that it was going here. But the screw tapes, you know, and the regular tape were coming out. Y'all yeah. decided to back up off of it. Not you, yeah, 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 the culture. But they jumped 
jumped off yeah. of and started trying to be like everybody else and missed the damn money. Up. Exactly. I mean, you know like, what I'm saying? H-Town went through an identity the damn crisis. Money up, like, trying like, to be like everybody else. You know what it was, man? I'm going to tell you what it was. Um, it was a combo of two things. First off, the game down here became convinced that they had to make it up there to be accepted. Because, and then too, we got to rewind in time and let's keep it factual. There was a time to where the South was not getting any respect at all. And That's so right. we became convinced that in order to be somebody, we had to be accepted up there instead of just being satisfied with who we was. But then what happened was, was once we got up there and saw it for what it was, it was kind of like a, no, nah, I don't want to play that game. And I think that what it was, was that boys was so successful in the region that they kind of just was okay with that because I mean you can be a millionaire down here I, I, without, Nick, without did, leaving and that's that's the, one of the blessings that we have and sometimes that's a gift and a curse I don't want to cut you off but that's yeah. what I mean I ain't gonna lie the first nigga that ra really made it very convincing to me was Lil Flip yeah I remember when it seemed like he had all the traction and motion. Yeah. Now I ain't gonna say to me, I'm on the outside looking in. Yeah. It looked like Lil Flip really didn't get the support in the infrastructure, and I don't know why. No, you're right, because I, I don't was, know I, why. I was up there and why at the time. Like but that was during I, the time I, when I was. I was up like, there. I don't know why, yeah. but it seemed like he is the man. But it seemed like it's some drawback because he may not be maneuvering the way that people would like. I'm just telling you how well, you know it looks from, from the outside looking well, in. Well, let me explain it from the inside looking out. Hey. What it is 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 that we abide by a different set of rules down here that everybody else don't abide by. Okay. And so once you step into certain rooms and you see people behaving in a way that'll get your cap twisted back down here, it's like, oh, okay. Let me step back from this. Okay. You know, okay. it's like, I, I'm going to just use this as an analogy. Like, imagine being somebody that's a weed smoker and the party is going down and it's cool. And then all of a sudden, somebody pull out crack and everybody Damn. starts smoking crack. And it's like, oh, shit. No, I'm no, not. I don't get out like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm using that analogy, yeah. analogy to explain how extreme the game is. Because, like, I moved to New York for two years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually... Uh, I was in talks with G Unit, you know what I'm saying? Shady, you know what I'm saying? Def I can't Jam believe you did that. Yeah, and, nigga, you uh, a Texas nigga? You can't be up there in them little bitty rooms like man, that, nigga. We like look. big stuff. <laughs> you crazy? Nigga. But How you, know you do it? My cousin me, did that. Me chasing a dream, and like truth be told, it was an uncomfortable dream chasing. You know, you know what it was though? I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Like that was one of the greatest things that happened because I got the chance to see that the world was bigger than here. Man, I love I love Thanks going, but I don't love staying. Yeah, you're right. Hey, because it's a great I place to make to money. Go. And yeah. kick it with it's, my it's niggas. It's a great place to I make money, home. yeah. Because you know, of course, but we because it's natural to us. Just yeah. like somebody from up there might come down here and feel. They the probably same ain't gonna way. like it. Yeah, you know, ain't no place like home. But yeah. uh, but you know, like it was just one of those situations to where like when you step into the machine, because like you got to think about that shit. Like down here. We can make the bread and we ain't got to do all of that extra shit. We ain't got to do the TMZs, the Kardashian bullshit to succeed and be rich down here in the TX. But up there, it's industry heavy. You know, you got to, you know, do the politics and all of that bullshit. And so it's like the cats down here went up there, got the deals and then stepped into those rooms and saw how that shit worked and was like, well, you know, now nah, this ain't necessarily my thing and just decided to just come back you know, to a comfortable space. And you know, and this is my thing, if that's what you want to do, do it. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, everybody not going to be a millionaire, but it's a whole bunch of happy hundred thousand there's. Yeah, I, I, I got to address the elephant in the room. I'm in Houston two weeks ago. Uh, takeoff uh, was uh, actually um, killed down here. Yeah. Um, where were you at and what's your take on it? Man, I'm going to say this, bro. Um, it threw me off, man, because I was actually at the crib chilling. And uh, I'm going to say this, man, and I'm just going to be as real about it as I can. Um, we got to be careful out here in these streets, man. You know, uh, at the end of the day, man, like rap, the thing I hate about rap sometimes is that this is the only game to where niggas feel like they got to prove themselves. You know, like everybody else gets to sing songs and nobody else expects them to live up to that uh, image. Rap is the only genre of music to where if you say you kill 17 niggas, then they expect you to kill 18 niggas. You know what wow. I'm saying? And so 
Uh, that's the first problem. And then the second thing is, is that uh, the lesson from that is, is this, man. When you that successful, you have to move as a business. It gets to a point in time to where you got to stop worrying about being a real nigga and be a businessman. Because, and again, you know, God bless the dead. You know what I'm saying? That's absolutely no disrespect. God bless Takeoff. God bless his family. You know what I'm saying? Everybody affected by that. But that was like an example of sometimes you don't need to be in certain areas. Or if you're going to be in certain areas, you need to move a certain way and move with purpose. Get in, get out. Ain't nothing wrong with making it to the house, bro. That don't make you soft. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, man, I'm from the streets, bro. Like, boys, I tell you, I'm in the hood all the time because that's where all my friends and my family is. But at the same time, I move with purpose. I understand that I can't be in certain spots for too long because I'm not indulging in certain activities no more. You know what I'm saying? And that's not me trying to act funny with my people, but, like, I don't hustle no more. I'm not out here in the streets active like that. I'm, I'm a full-time businessman and a rapper now, so I need to conduct myself as that because it's people that depend on me. Because if I get in the jam, everybody that's depending on me is in the jam now. And so I have to move with purpose. You know what I'm saying? And that don't mean that you got to act funny with your people, but at the same time, you got to move with purpose. You got to move with a certain type of sense. You know what I'm saying? And I just hope that... You know, my young my young cast is coming up in the game. Like, bro, it's okay to say, say, bro, I need to move around. Um, Man, it was just, hey, man, RIP to uh, take Yeah, on. hey, RIP to him. You know, uh -huh. sad situation, man, for everybody involved, man. And I, I just I just hope that, um, you know, it's sad, man, because it seems like, like I remember, you know, I'm a little bit older, man. So, like, I remember when it was a shock to us when Pac and Big died. Yeah, it was crazy. That was crazy. Like, like a lot of y'all wasn't around for that, but like that was like a real moment in time for us when Pac died and then after Biggie died. Like that was something that was unusual. But you gotta understand, being an older cat, you know, um, it's like a, a abusive relationship. Pretty soon, you Some know, facts. That, you know, the woman just give up or the man he you, he getting cheated on all day long. He just whatever you know yeah. he don't care anymore yeah. or, or or you become numb to the pain yeah. when you lose a, 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 a say it was it was it was it was a shocker back then but when you when you lose a a a, a, a pop smoke when you lose uh that other boy that was up there from new york i don't forgot his name but he used to be a french montana i dang, i don't forgot his name What's his name? Chinks. Chinks. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I was yeah, a big yeah, fan yeah, yeah. of Hills. Yeah. And then you lose a Dolph. And then you lose a, you know, PMB Rock. And then you lose that other two more niggas in LA. You and, and, and it but becomes that, a thing where now we lost uh, takeoff. You know, but it's like it keeps happening over and over quickly, right behind each other. Boom, 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 but boom. But it all has. It's not the same no more. But it goes right back to what I said. Because I'm guilty of it myself. You know what I'm saying? Me being from the streets. You know what I'm saying? And you know me me being one of them ones. Like, sometimes I be even feeling like, say, bro, like, this is my hood. I'm from the streets. A nigga can't tell me nothing, but then I have to check myself. Like, say, bro, you're not living like that no more. When you got money, when you done made it, you a yeah, target, bro. Like that no you know more. what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. point blank. Like, nigga, like, niggas in the hood die every day over tax refunds, homie. A couple of thousand, you feel me? You could win two, you can win a couple hundred dollars in a dice game and get smoked. So imagine being a millionaire in the hood where the wolves and the coyotes at. It, it's some cats out there that's on bond that don't know how they're gonna pay their lawyer. Got child support and, and baby mama waiting at the house to get on them. You know what I'm saying? Cause they ain't, you know, the, the baby need diapers. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's real out here in the streets and you have to be mindful of that. And that don't make you weak or no pump because you move a certain way. You got to be smart. Let me you tell just you. got to be smart. It just uh, is what it is. It is what it is. Um, um, what do you think about Sauce Walker? He down here. Man, you know. listen, bro. Uh, shout out to TSL. my little bro, Real Spill, man. Uh, he one of the new additions to uh, the Sauce family, man. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be one thou wow and I don't care who I piss off. Sauce Walker is doing what I wish that a lot of the OGs would have done, man. Cause one thing I could say about that dude is is that he has a formula and he's figured it out to where not only did he build himself as a brand, but he makes sure that he uses every opportunity that he has to build his brand and bring light 
to his artists, man. And uh, cause I'm gonna be real with you. Like when Sauce came out at first, I didn't like him because I didn't understand him. And uh, you know, I thought he was just, you know, just some wild young stand. Then it was one night, it was the spot uh called the Enclave, man. Big shout out to my homie uh uh natural. And um I watched him speak. And once I heard him, I'm like, no, nah, this youngster, this youngster got it. This youngster understands something, you know what I'm saying? And I think that it's hard for them to give him his props now. But like when that run is done, I'ma honestly say, man, that like that soft shit is gonna be like something that's never ever happened in the game. And they're gonna have to get that young cat his props, man. Cause like he's actually building some shit. Like a lot of cats don't know how to get out of the way of their artists. The only artist that I ever saw that knew how to properly push their shit was Wayne and Ross. Too many artists still be trying to be the stars and getting in the way of their artists and shit. And it's like Walk does his thing, but then he also knows how to get out of his artist's way and use his star power to help build his artist, man. So, like, I, I love what that young cat doing, man. Like, Why you say it's hard for them to give him his props right now? Because to give him his props, they have to admit their failure. That's hard. Just hands down. You know what I'm saying? And that's the nature of the game that we play. Just point blank, period. It, wow. You know, and it is what it is. And again, I don't care who I pissed off because at the end of the day, when you got in that position, this is the thing, man. Let me give y'all some free game. The way that you keep yourself relevant and to stay cool is by consistently putting out cool shit, even if that cool shit ain't your music. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, Wayne will never fail because he can always jump on a Drake or a Nicki Minaj song. Rick Ross could stay hot by jumping on a motherfucking Wale or a Meek Mill song. So at the end of the day, if you build yourself up and then you build up some shit that's hot, you'll never get cold. Because if you put the hottest shit in the game, in the game, it's right there at your disposal. I mean, you got to understand you skipping over. Uh, you got to say uh now, NBA young boy is something different. You know what he is, bro. And I'm I a, had to say that because yeah. when you speak in these names, yeah. you got to you can't skip by this dude yeah. because of the way that he's electrifying the social media platforms and the way that you can't every nigga if you see him come out tomorrow, he's about to start touring too. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, he, because he's these young cat. niggas. Yeah. He's another these cat kids, I was sleeping on. Yeah, they yeah, love that cat. So, yeah. so yeah, let's speak on him too. We can't skip by him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm. Let, let me say this because that's a Louisiana comp. I want to keep it Texas. And big shout Ooh. out to that boy. You know what I'm saying? He doing this thing and shit. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? But boy, let's just say this: there's a lot of cats that are out here right now that are switching up the game. And if you smart, even if you don't like them, yeah. Just look at what they doing. And the only thing I said, only reason I said that because you brought up a Lil Wayne and Drake. Oh yeah, no, I understand. So, yeah, so I you know, I got to, I got to pull you back it, in. When you, you know, go down you got, now, you got you the Texas on your neck. You when you the pass Texas through Baton Rouge yeah. and you go to New Orleans and yeah. holler Lil Wayne, nigga, yeah. you can't pass up. Listen, NBA, hey, and, and, and big shout out nigga, to you. Nigga, I do this over here. Let's get straight. I got a Louisiana wife, so I got much love for Louisiana. Don't ever get it fucked up, man. Like for real, for real. I think it's I think Texas and Louisiana is so closely knit. Family, man. I mean, um, yeah. let's talk about you and Bum B and Dougie D. Yeah, man. man y'all did that yeah, little, so that, hard. Hey, man. man, that's so hard. Went so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was dope. Let's talk about that for a second. How did y'all even come together to even do that? Man, I'm going to tell you, man. Big shout out to my bro, Dougie D, man. Uh, you know, man, that's the homie, man. Like, for real, for real, man. And uh, at the time, man, Dougie got the beat. And he just called me, you know, in his only way. Say, bro, 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 I, I need you right there. Yo, y'all know how Dougie do, man. Yeah, Dougie reached out to me, bro, and it was like, say, bro, like, you know, I need you to do your thing on this here, man. And when he sent me that beat, you know, it just it just came to me, man. And like, the rest is history. Because wow. like, truth be told, let me tell you what's crazy about it. Uh, you know, I wrote the hook, you know what I'm saying, sang that shit. And I had no idea Bum was going to end up on the record. You know what I'm saying? Because he ended up calling me. You know what I'm saying? He like, nigga. He like, bro, bun on that bitch now. Nah. I'm like, man, don't be playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and uh, when I heard it, man, you know, that like that shit was epic, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, big shout out, man, to Bun. You know what I'm saying? You know, because he, you know, he even gave me my card, like, at the shoot. You know what I'm saying? You know, Bun was like, say, nigga, like, nigga, that hook was hard. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, hard. you know, that's what, like, a lot of people don't know, man, because, um, 
I sing also, you know, Cash used to me rapping like, some people know that I sing, but like I really be like singing my ass off. You sing, shit. sing? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, sing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I sing, sing. So, so if I ask you to sing a little bit of something right now. I knew right that was now. coming when you do that. <laughs> yeah. She gonna come at you. If you watch this show, he know. Then I look away. I'm like, oh, hell, yeah. you know what I mean? What you get yourself into. I wanna hear a little bit of song. Um, you know what? <laughs> you know what, let, let, let me see what I could, uh, Give me a chorus or something. Look, that's, that's what I'm thinking about right now, because I, I, I want to sing something like... Uh, I'm a thug, street thug. I'm here grinding for my pay. When having no other way. I'm a thug, street thug. I'm just trying to stay my G. Quit hating, nigga, please. You know what I'm man, saying? oh, love, man. Yeah. We in H-Town, baby. That was just some impromptu yeah, shit. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. We in H-Town, you know? baby. Stop hey. playing, man. I, hey, listen, Yeah, you man. can sing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I rap a nigga ass into the wild. You feel me? So, you know. No, man. I yeah. just, I, hey, man, look, man. I, I never, nothing seems to amaze me over here when I'm sitting in this seat, man, and I'm sitting beside brothers, man, and sisters, man. We some talented yeah. people, Get bro. with it, man. Yeah, yeah. like, I, I got some, man, I, I got some joints with some of the best of them, man. Like I, you know, I, I know you and Zero got to join together. A couple of them. Oh, let's, yeah. let's let's get into that. Even how is it working with Zero? Cause looking from the outside looking in, yeah. he's not that approachable to be asking to do a song <laughs> with. Like so I'm gonna with, keep it. I'm funky. just being real the, with you. The, the road shit that was like just. Uh, we had a mutual friend, and so I reached out to the friend and just made. But you never happen. talked to the you nigga while y'all working. We never had that communication. How the hell saying? do y'all put a song together and never speak? Man, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. That's just the way that the industry works. Like That's sometimes crazy. it's just a cut the check shit. Now nah, there are other people like uh, like uh, I got a singer with Devin that I'm about to get ready to drop. So like that's big, bro. Like we was actually in the lab together. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Because you know, like uh, for those of y'all that don't know. Uh, Devin got an album called One for the Road. I'm actually on a song. It's track number nine called Rearview. You know what okay. I'm saying? That that's me on there. They spell, they slaughtered my name on the spelling, but that's me on there. You know what I'm saying? Doing my thing. And so, you know, like Big Bro, when I reached out to him, you know, uh, the love was already there, man. You know, he pulled up. Devin a different type of dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Devin is the dude. Devin is yeah, a yeah, different yeah, type yeah, of yeah, dude. Yeah. Hey, so, dude you let know. me tell you, let me say this because, you know, that Cadillac 19. Nah, 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 yeah, yeah, Lake Bill 79. I'm rolling. Yeah. God, yeah. Nah, yeah. But then you hear him on that on that Snoop Dogg, too. Yeah. That nigga there, yeah. fly, man. Say, man, that's big, bro. Like, that, I, like listen, that nigga yeah. there, he no, is one of them fat. dudes, bro. Like, I'm going to be real with you, bro. It is, it's, that's one of my greatest accomplishments to me because it was an honor to me when he called me because it's like, okay, this is somebody that Dre, Snoop, Jay-Z, R. Kelly, you know, it's like countless people have had him on their shit and for him to tell me that he wanted me on his shit, like, and it can't tell me nothing. Woo! Nothing. Yeah, and, that's then, and then it was so crazy because like, bro actually came to me with the song that fit me. Like, straight up, like, say, bro, like, I want you on this one. I got a song for you, nigga. And when mm. he put that bitch on, it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because um, we was chilling together. You know, like, how we chill and shit, man. And uh, bro put on the beat. And I'm like, man, put that bitch on repeat. So, like, I'm sitting there for, like, about 10 minutes and shit. And he like, man, like, I'm going I'm to I'm uh, email you that shit. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm ready. Mm. And he looked at me like, like, nigga, man, quit playing, kid. I'm like, nigga, I'm ready. Like, well, spit it then. You know, like, I just, yeah, how you yeah, just did yeah, me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I spit the verse. Nigga was like, nigga, we finna record this shit right now. We walk straight in the crib, nigga, and, you know, the rest is history. Got it done. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, now, like, that was the homie, man. Like, man, like, no bullshit, man. Me and Dev used to sit up and drink the shit out of Bud Lights. You know, I don't smoke weed no more and shit. Bro would be doing this thing and shit. But, uh, man, we sit up, get full of fucking Bud Lights, man, chopping game and shit. Like, man, big shout out to the dude, man. Like, Devin, that's, that's one of the realest The cats. dude. Yeah. I've the been game, asking man. for him for a minute. It's him, DOC. DOC already told us he coming. He yeah. already, it's, it's just Same, whenever man. we make it happen. Can but, I say something? Go ahead. Let me give DOC his flowers, man. Let me tell y'all something that y'all may not have paid attention to. This rap game ain't shit without Texas. Mm -hmm. When you come to the East Coast, you ain't nothing unless you done wrapped over some DJ Premier shit. Texas. DOC, one of the fathers of the West Coast movement. 
When you talk about that NWA, that Ice Cube, and you can't leave him out. All of that shit, he, he was running. right fucking there. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, the game ain't nothing without this Texas shit, man. And then the nigga got a baby from Erica. <laughs> <laughs> man, stop playing, man. Hold on. That man, man did his thing. Say, man, man listen, Y'all man. look just like her. Listen, man. <laughs> I think my wife wouldn't even be mad if I cheated with Erica <laughs> Badu. My wife would give me dap if I cheated on her with Erica Badu. <laughs> She'd understand that shit. Man, I'm Erica just saying, hard, man. For real. Hey, Badu so, Lab Legata, man. So, when you, what's your top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any genre. Ooh, see. That, just that's three. It. That Any number genre. one. We don't want no explanation and, and, and all that's, that. And that's hard, though. No, you next. Go ahead. You know start. Start. <laughs> number okay. one. Number so, one. So let me say this then. If if I just gotta pick number yep. one, number Scarface. One. Number two. And I agree with you. Number two. Let's go number two. <laughs> number two. I'm gonna have to go Stevie Wonder. Number three. Well, that's hard. Number three. Man, that would be like hard as fuck. But if I just got to fucking choose, I'm gonna say Coogee cool Rap. OG rap, you took That's it all the way first back. I'm gonna I'm take it Coogee like rap. super duper old school. You had like, to, yeah, cause like like cool G with them words, cause like I'm one of them like rap syllable for syllable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Types of cats and like that dude had a style that was like none other. Like point blank, like one of my favorites. Every time I work on the album. I listen to Fast Life. That's a song. Cool G rapping Nas. Go listen to that mm. song, bro. Like, hands down. Like, if you into lyrics, and like, it's crazy, bro, because that was like, man, man, that song there is crazy, bro. Nas held his own. And like, that's the first time I ever heard Nas sweat on the song. That's the only time I heard Nas sweat on the song, but he held his own. But wow. like, rhyme fest. I just loved your choices, man, because yeah. you made the right decision in saying Scarface. Scar oh, yeah. No, man, pop a face, man. Stop, stop playing, bro. He really he was, was listening stop. for you to say Pimp C. That's yeah. what he was well, listening for. Well, listen, you know what, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me stop you right there. I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, uh, that's two different styles. Okay. Is that, uh, you said Pimp I said C. any genre, but I'm just saying I, he's you my number know. one. But I understand Scarface could saying. be another person number one. Now, when you say something else. Uh, contrary to that, then you got yourself an argument. But see, I, I got cut short because it's like you know, like man, I could throw the Andre three thousand. Nah, we not throwing none of them, and nah, we're not, we not doing none of that. Ass. But I, but I only had to pick three, so you know we gonna keep. That's it crazy that. though that that you 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 left pimp out though. No, I'm just kidding. Nah, 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 did you ever get to meet pimp? <laughs> no, I and I hate that I didn't, man. I got the chance to meet Bun. Um, it's crazy. I met Bun back, back to Corey Mo. I actually had a song that uh Corey Mo produced that I had with Bun. Uh, back when I had my second deal that never came out due to politics, man. But like real, like, and I ain't, and I'm not even ashamed to say it, bro. Bun wrote his verse right there on the spot, bro. And when that nigga was not looking, when I saw that he was finna leave that shit, bro, I picked that nigga's rap up, bro, and folded that shit, put that shit in my back pocket, nigga, and took that shit home, bro, to keep that shit, bro. You can't that shit meant something to me, my nigga. And I lost it. Oh. I lost it, bro. But I'm not even finna lie to you, and I don't care what none of you niggas say, because I'ma tell you something. 96 to 2006 Bun B wasn't nothing fucking with that shit, bro. Bun is the first nigga that made Jay-Z have to come back on the song and spit another verse, bro. Go listen to Big Pimp and the radio version of that shit. Jay had to go back in the lab and write a whole nother verse and add that shit, nigga. I Bun still say uh, song, Pimp Pimp ate them niggas up with eight balls. Man. Oh, yeah. No, listen, man. Yeah, pimp, <laughs> pimp is the legend. I mean, For like, me, I, Pimp ate them niggas up with eight balls. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I I call myself, so I refer to myself as the son of Rick James, the nephew of Sweet James. I like that. To pay homage. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I get, I get the comparisons in the tone sometimes. And then, too, like, uh, man, man, Pimp was just, man, man, Pimp was a fucking alien, man. Just to be able to rap, sing, and produce, produce like that, it, you know that what I'm saying? Was different. Because I used to produce as well. I used to be the three-headed monster too. And so, like, um, Pimp was like one of the cats that gave me the courage to sing. I used to look at singing like it was weak. You know what I'm saying? And like Pimp would get on that bitch and meow on that motherfucker. Oh, he had that right. <laughs> Pimp would get on that bitch, nigga. Fly. I'm talking about say and let it loose. And it was like, say, man, like, we, no. hey, 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 you know. we could talk about Pimp all Oh, yeah. Day. But shit, show, sure. listen, and I would gladly uh, join in that man, shit. Man, listen, hey, man, so, man, how can people get a hold of you if they try to link man, up with you? Wherever you listen to music at, wherever you watch videos at, anywhere, man, you can find me there. K I D R I C C. James, K 
K I D R I C C J A M E S, man. Follow me, like fucking me laws in motherfucking white folks' neighborhoods. You know, follow me, like hurry up and buy when you're in the beauty supply store. You know, I'm, I'm right there, man. So I'm you coming? You come to the D? So you can come and come by my spot, man. Listen, man. And, I, and I got we some, can do it in the studio. I got some stories about. That, I know dude. that. I, I want to come out there, man. I, I had a crazy ass episode that happened on I-35 in Lancaster. We we might be able to talk about that once the statute of limitations. Are <laughs> shit, you know. Thank you so much for coming. We love man, you, kid. Listen, man. Thank y'all for James having me, man. in the me, building, man. guy, man. We love for you, real, man. For real, man. Hey, man. Check it, man. Hey, man. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel, man. It's dope. Y'all know we here. We in the H, man. We in Houston, Texas, man. With some real stomp down cats, man. This. Rocking with us, man. Blessing us. We paying homage to all the grace down here, man. It's going down. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And yes, we sir. Are.